Was it was it Pink News or the Daily Mail that you did an interview with? And it you, was you, both. Yeah, you talked about a new relationship with a woman, and um, it, you described yourself as a pansexual, which mm. was something that I'd never heard of before. Um, just explain to our listeners what that, what you, how you define how I that. I define that, and and I think first of all, to put it kind of into context, I'd identified as straight for almost all of my adult life. Um, I'd always had boyfriends before. And found myself in a position where I was in a relationship with a woman, a wonderful woman. And it really made me question everything. You know, you question mm. your whole identity. Am I somehow hiding something that I didn't know about? That kind of thing. And I realised, actually, no, it's because it's the person that I'm attracted to. And their physical attributes, male, female, other, doesn't matter to me. It's how you click and how you get on in their personality. And... Um, I realised that at some point I was going to talk about this, probably. So you go on, you know, as you do when you're sort of having these moments of, gosh, this is a new facet to me that I didn't know about. And you look at these different definitions online. And uh, pansexual was the one that seemed to resonate most with me, which is that it's an attraction to the person regardless of you know, anything else. Because a lot of people would say, well, actually, it's bisexual. Mm. What, what's the difference between being a bisexual and a pansexual? Well, I suppose it's just recognising, first of all, the fact that the gender aspect of it, to me, is not that important. And in, there are people who are gender nonconformist, they're, you know, perhaps intersex, they could be, you know, it, it doesn't really matter to me, that stuff. Um, and it opens the door to, well, it's a woman, but maybe it's another gender you know it doesn't really matter so it's a more sort of all-encompassing inclusive definition but yeah I think when I first did it and when I first spoke to let's say my mother about it I would describe it as that so that I'm in a relationship with a woman and I'm bisexual and then as I realized that didn't roll off the tongue it just didn't feel right it wasn't the right term for me then I discovered this other term and actually when I say that I feel more comfortable with it and how did that conversation go yeah well it's a tough one I mean when your mum and you actually spend your whole life talking about when you're going to meet Prince Charming and have the mm. wedding and have all the kids. And actually her first reaction was, well, does this mean you can't have kids? It's like, well, no, actually. One of the reasons why I'm with this woman is because she does want to have kids one day and have a family. And uh, actually, you know, the last person I was with didn't. And that was the deal breaker for the relationship. So no, mm. but it, you have to have those conversations. And in the end, every single member of my family has been, and beyond actually, has been so supportive and just absolutely lovely. And the visibility of it, um, I think, has helped some people. I've been contacted by people who have had, you know, said, thank you for saying this, thank you for raising this word in uh, society. People didn't know what it was. I had a couple of MPs come up to me going, God, I've had emails, of, you know, people from places far flung in the UK he's like what is this you know let's have a conversation about it what does it mean and that's not a bad thing surely but then you will have had other people like I've got a text here from Brian in Gloucester who says I'd be grateful if you would please ask Leila Moran to keep her sexual preferences to he's herself. right he's right so actually the the reason why this happened and he's in your job what does it matter this has mm. no impact at all on me being an MP at all and the reason why I felt I had to do it and it probably would have been you know, at some point come out the you know, by, by the by conversation. As you know, Ian, I, I don't shy away from talking about my private life. It comes up. But the reason why I had to do it this week was because there was a newspaper that was threatening to out me. And they had actually started asking questions as early as mid-October, months and months and months ago. And, and this was a Mail on Sunday. Mail on Sunday, who have owned up to the fact that they were going to do this. And I just don't think it's relevant. What would that have been their public interest reason because nowadays you can't it's not like 1995 when the news of the world no. would have have something like this on their front page every day as sort of prurience they have to have a public interest justification i don't know i don't know they i especially in mid-october i mean they, they, they were talking about the fact that you might run for leadership well i haven't said i am they're like well you might i was like okay um but i'm not <laughs> there isn't even a contest yet and in mid-october joe swinson was in place and it was before mm. an election so i don't understand why even as far back as then and the fact is they found it salacious and they wanted to talk about it and i hope that the reaction has made them realize that this isn't something that is right and i have to say in the vast majority of journalists who i have spoken to about this don't see the public interest in it think it's nobody's business 
And the reason why I spoke out about it, and the caller is absolutely right, it shouldn't be a big deal. It shouldn't be something we're talking about. People care about more interesting things than this, frankly. But if someone's going to be telling my personal story, I think that person should be me. The, the other thing, it, it, it slightly blows a hole in the argument that I always put forward, is that you are born gay. Yeah. And yeah. I, I knew from the age of, I don't know, six, seven, eight, that I was different, that yeah. I, I, I just knew may not have been able to identify it in those terms in, at that age, but very quickly I could. Um, are you telling us that you've never even thought about being with a woman? Uh, maybe, and I've said this before, maybe at school, and it wasn't anything I'd acted on, it was just mm. a maybe I am, because everyone at that age is kind of mm. working it out, and you learn that some of your friends are gay, and you're thinking, is that something I am too? Don't know. Um, and I've got a gay brother and a gay sister, and like it's not something that... I'd, I'd, so I've thought about it, around it, I love it, it's great, who cares? Um, and yeah, it does kind of blow a hole in, and it makes you think, like, was this something that was always there and I just didn't know? Who cares? I mean, the fact is, I'm in a nice relationship now, that's great. People have found out about it because I was kind of forced to talk about it. But let's have a conversation about the wider issues around equality, that in this day and age, this shouldn't be a news story, and that's kind of the story. <laughs>